second. Check this out. If you take Marshall out of the picture, old Benny won't have anyone left to beat. The casting process for the 1982 TV series, which became a beloved show of its time, was a fascinating journey. Producers aimed to capture the spirit of teenage life with authenticity and humor. For the role of Patty Green, Sarah Jessica Parker was chosen aider. She stood out in auditions with her spark and energy. Her ability to convey the character's insecurities and ambitions resonated with the casting directors. Jamie Gertz, known for her roles in several films, was cast as Patty's best friend, Jennifer DiNuccio. Gertz's comedic timing and chemistry with Parker shone through during auditions, making them a perfect pair. The role of Lauren Hutchinson, the popular girl at school, went to Merritt Butrick. His portrayal of the character's charisma and complexity won over the casting team. For the part of Johnny Slash, a mysterious and intriguing character, Jamie Gertz's real-life boyfriend at the time, John Caleri, was selected. His auditions showcased the right blend of aloofness and charm required for the role. The film's diverse cast also included African-American actor Clayton Felker as Marshall Blackman and Hispanic actress Tracy Nelson as Penny Baker. Their inclusion added depth and richness to the show's depiction of high school life. Chemistry tests played a crucial role in finalizing the cast. The producers wanted to ensure that the actors would have a natural rapport with each other. These tests helped them identify the right mix of talent and personalities that would bring the show to life. In the end, the cast of the series became much more than just a group of actors. They became a tight-knit ensemble that brought authenticity and humor to the story of teenage life in the 1980s. We're talking about girls football. Wow, that's a totally different team. The director of the 1982 TV series, known for its authentic portrayal of teenage life, brought a unique vision to the screen. With a background in documentary filmmaking, they approached the show with a sense of realism, aiming to capture the raw emotions and experiences of adolescence. The director's style was characterized by their use of handheld cameras and natural lighting, which gave the series a cinema verite feel. They also employed a loose shooting style, allowing the actors to improvise and play off each other's energies. This approach created a sense of authenticity and spontaneity that resonated with audiences. Collaboration was key to the director's process. They worked closely with the writers to develop the characters and storylines, often drawing from their own experiences growing up. The director also fostered a supportive and inclusive environment on set, encouraging the young cast to share their ideas and take ownership of their characters. The director's creative influences included groundbreaking filmmakers like John Cassavetes and Martin Scorsese, as well as the raw, honest storytelling of documentary photographers like Diane Arbus and Nan Golden. These influences can be seen in the show's unvarnished portrayal of teenage life, which was both refreshing and revolutionary for its time. Despite the challenges of working with a young, inexperienced cast and limited resources, the director was able to bring their vision to life with a unique blend of realism, humor, and heart. The result was a show that not only captured the spirit of the early 1980s, but also transcended its time to become a beloved classic. Actions speak louder than words, and a fair feather friend what is... It's a fair... Square Pegs was a groundbreaking TV series that premiered in 1982. It follows the lives of a group of high school misfits, and its realistic portrayal of teenage life made it a hit among viewers. The show only lasted for one season, but its impact on popular culture has been long-lasting. Despite its short run, Square Pegs has remained a beloved symbol of the TV industry. Its honest and relatable depiction of teenage struggles has made it a timeless classic. The show's characters were complex and well-developed, and viewers couldn't help but root for them as they navigated the ups and downs of high school. But there are many surprising and emotional stories behind the making of Square Pegs. From shocking casting decisions to heartbreaking personal struggles, this TV series has a fascinating history. Did you know that one of the show's stars was actually a successful musician before landing the role? or that the show's creator faced numerous challenges while trying to get the series off the ground. These are just a few of the many interesting facts about Square Pegs that you might not know. As we delve deeper into the story of Square Pegs, you'll discover even more surprising and emotional moments. From funny anecdotes to heart-wrenching confessions, this TV series has it all. So, what is your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Square Pegs? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below.
Whether you were a fan of the show when it first aired or discovered it later on, there's no denying the enduring appeal of this classic TV series. Wow! I found the prize! All right! <laughs> In the early 1980s, a groundbreaking TV series emerged, offering a fresh and authentic take on the high school experience. The show's production was marked by innovative techniques and meticulous attention to detail, particularly in set design and location selection. The series' creators aimed to capture the essence of a suburban American high school, and they meticulously designed the sets to reflect this. The school's hallways, classrooms, and common areas were adorned with lockers, posters, and other details to create an immersive and believable environment. Even the cafeteria, a central location for many episodes, was designed with care, featuring a variety of tables and seating options to accommodate different student groups. When it came to filming, the production team faced several logistical challenges. For one, they had to balance the needs of the story with the constraints of the school setting. This meant working around the schedules of real students and teachers, as well as ensuring that filming did not disrupt the normal school day. To overcome these challenges, the production team employed several innovative techniques. For example, they used mobile set pieces, such as rolling lockers and portable chalkboards, to quickly transform a single space into multiple locations. This allowed them to film multiple scenes in a single location, reducing the need for travel and setup time. Additionally, the team made use of cutting-edge technologies, such as handheld cameras and portable lighting equipment, to capture the action in a more spontaneous and intimate way. This gave the series a more cinematic feel, setting it apart from other TV shows of the time. Despite these innovations, the production of the series was not without its challenges. For instance, filming in a real school meant dealing with issues such as noise and lighting conditions that were beyond the control of the production team. However, through careful planning and creative problem solving, the team was able to overcome these obstacles and create a show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on television history. Three number ones, and two weeks later I got these great Ginsu knives. The TV series, often referred to as Square Pegs, debuted in 1982 and captured the hearts of many with its authentic portrayal of high school life. The show, created by Ann Beats, was known for its relatable characters and coming-of-age themes. The series follows the lives of two freshman girls, Patty and Lauren, who are eager to fit in at their new school. The girls' journey to self-discovery is filled with humorous and heartwarming moments as they navigate the complex social dynamics of high school. The cast of Square Pegs includes Sarah Jessica Parker, who plays the role of Patty, and Amy Linker, who portrays Lauren. Both actresses deliver strong performances, bringing depth and authenticity to their characters. The show also features a talented supporting cast, including Jamie Gertz, who plays the popular cheerleader, and John Femia, who plays the school's resident bad boy. The ensemble works well together, creating a believable and engaging high school environment. Square Pegs is as notable for its catchy soundtrack, featuring popular music from the early 1980s. The show's theme song, My Guy, became a hit single, and is still remembered fondly by fans today. Despite its short run of only one season, Square Pegs left a lasting impact on television and pop culture. The show's honest portrayal of high school life resonated with audiences, paving the way for future coming-of-age series. In conclusion, Square Pegs is a charming and relatable TV series that captures the ups and downs of high school life. With its talented cast and memorable soundtrack, the show remains a beloved classic among fans of 80s television. Searching through your streets on ponies, on old pennies, in books. The music in the TV series played a significant role in enhancing its narrative and emotional tone. Composer Dennis McCarthy and musician Mark Lindsay were involved in creating the show's score and soundtrack. McCarthy, known for his work on Star Trek, brought a unique perspective to the show's music. He created a score that complemented the characters' experiences and emotions. The music was upbeat and catchy, reflecting the youthful energy of the series. Lindsay, a former member of the band Paul Revere and the Raiders, contributed to the soundtrack with his talent for pop music. He wrote and performed the theme song, which became a hit and added to the show's popularity. The music in the film was carefully crafted to enhance the storyline and characters' emotions. For instance, the use of upbeat music during party scenes created a lively and energetic atmosphere. In contrast, slower, more poignant tunes accompanied emotional or dramatic moments, adding depth and intensity 
Moreover, the music in the series was also used to highlight cultural references and influences of the time. The soundtrack featured popular songs from the early 80s, providing a nostalgic backdrop for the show's setting. In creating the music for the film, McCarthy and Lindsay drew inspiration from their own experiences and the show's script. They worked closely with the show's creators to ensure that the music aligned with the narrative and emotional tone. Overall, the music in the series played a crucial role in shaping its overall feel and impact. The catchy theme song, upbeat party tunes, and emotional ballads all contributed to the show's success and enduring popularity. In the early 1980s, a groundbreaking TV series captured the hearts of many. One notable actress, Amy Linker, who played Lauren Hutchinson, had to wear fake braces and a fat suit for her role. The production team went to great lengths to ensure authenticity in their characters. The filming location was an abandoned high school in Norwalk, California, which also served as the set for Grease 2. The cast found the school's industrial surroundings less than ideal, as factories nearby produced a strong odor, making outdoor shoots uncomfortable. Interestingly, Sarah Jessica Parker, who played Patty, was the very first actor to audition on the first day. Her early arrival and impressive performance set the bar high for the rest of the auditions. This anecdote showcases the dedication and talent present behind the scenes of this iconic series. Nice to me. Um, well, either I'm just an extremely nice person or I'd rather do anything than my trade woman. One iconic scene from the show takes place in the episode The Glee Club where Patty Greenglass, played by Sarah Jessica Parker, auditions for the school's Glee Club. Patty's performance of My Guy is both endearing and awkward, showcasing Parker's comedic timing and vulnerability. The scene is shot in a single take, with the camera focused solely on Parker, creating a sense of intimacy and vulnerability. In an interview, Parker reflected on the scene, stating, I remember feeling so nervous, but also excited. It was a big moment for Patty, and I wanted to do justice to the character. The scene also highlights the show's commitment to authenticity, as Patty's audition is far from perfect. She forgets the lyrics and stumbles over her words, but ultimately wins over the Glee Club director with her earnestness and determination. Another iconic scene from the show is in the episode The Mascot, where the main characters attend a high school basketball game. The scene is notable for its use of handheld camera work and quick cuts, creating a sense of energy and excitement. Director Craig Zisk explained his approach to the scene, stating, We wanted to capture the chaos and excitement of a high school basketball game. We used handheld cameras to create a sense of urgency and movement. The scene also features a memorable performance by the show's resident bad boy Johnny Slash, played by John Femia. Slash performs a dance routine on the sidelines, much to the delight of the crowd. Femia's performance is both confident and charismatic, showcasing his natural talent as a performer. Overall, these iconic scenes from the show are memorable for their strong performances, innovative direction, and commitment to authenticity. They capture the spirit of adolescence and the struggles of fitting in, themes that continue to resonate with audiences today. You're right. We should expand our horizons. It'll be nice to be rejected. In the world of 1980s television, the show Square Pegs left a lasting impression. Marge Doucet, known for her role in the series, was featured in Beyond and TV Guide's 100 Greatest Moments that rocked TV for her unforgettable dance to Devo's music in the episode Muffy's Bat Mitzvah. The casting of Sarah Jessica Parker as Patty was almost derailed due to her perceived attractiveness. However, the casting director's sunglasses and a bit of creativity saved the day, leading to Parker's successful portrayal of the character. Moreover, the bond between the show's creator, Anne Beats, and actress Amy Linker, who played Lauren, remained strong even after the series ended. As of 2020, they continue to stay in touch, highlighting the enduring connections formed during the filming of the show. Oh, you already know Patty. Oh yeah, she's a great kid. Released in 1982, this TV series quickly gained popularity among audiences, particularly teenagers, for its authentic portrayal of high school life. The show resonated with viewers due to its relatable characters and realistic storylines, which differed from the idealized versions often seen in other media. The series tackled various social and cultural themes relevant to its time, such as the struggle for identity, the pressures of conformity, and the challenges of adolescence. By addressing these issues, the film contributed to important discussions and helped young audiences feel seen and understood. 
Moreover, the show influenced pop culture in various ways. For instance, it introduced Sarah Jessica Parker to a wider audience, launching her successful career in television and film. Additionally, the series' fashion choices, such as its preppy and eclectic styles, left a lasting impact on the fashion industry and continue to inspire trends today. Furthermore, the show's diverse cast and realistic portrayal of high school friendships and cliques paved the way for more inclusive and nuanced representations of teenagers in media. This helped break down stereotypes and broaden audiences' perspectives on the complexities of adolescence. Overall, this TV series left a significant cultural and social impact by resonating with audiences, influencing pop culture, and contributing to important discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. Its authentic portrayal of high school life and relatable characters continue to inspire and captivate viewers to this day. Otherwise, our entire class will have to wait until maybe November to adopt that little Guatemalan child. In the casting of the 1982 TV series, both Amy Linker and Aidan Quinn had interesting experiences. Linker, who played Patty Green, initially faced doubts about her suitability for the role due to her perceived attractiveness. Meanwhile, Quinn auditioned for the part of Johnny Slash, but was considered too old for the part, which eventually went to Merritt Butrick. The show's cancellation after just one season was unexpected, as it had received positive reviews from critics and was well liked by viewers. However, it was later revealed that the show's production was marred by rampant drug use among the cast and crew members. Overall, the 1982 TV series had a memorable cast and interesting behind-the-scenes stories, but its potential was cut short due to off-screen issues. I mean, the rhythm of the tom-tom is in his blood, and he's got to get down and do his... The 1982 TV series, often simply referred to as The Show, received mixed reviews from critics when it first aired. Some praised it for its fresh and realistic portrayal of teenage life, while others criticized it for its lack of originality. However, the series gained a loyal following among young viewers who appreciated its humor and relatable characters. Notable television critic Tom Shales of The Washington Post described the show as a bright, breezy, and often funny look at the traumas and tribulations of being a teenager. He commended the performances of the young cast, particularly Sarah Jessica Parker, who played the lead role of Patty Green. Despite the mixed critical reception, the show was nominated for several awards during its brief run. It received two Emmy nominations, including Outstanding Writing in a Comedy Series and Outstanding Directing in a Comedy Series. The show's theme song, My Guy, performed by Grace Jones, was also nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Pop Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals. The nominations and awards were a testament to the hard work and talent of everyone involved in the show, from the writers and directors to the actors and crew members. The recognition helped to legitimize the series and gave it a level of credibility in the entertainment industry. Furthermore, the show's impact was felt beyond just the awards and nominations. It served as a launching pad for the careers of several young actors, including Sarah Jessica Parker, who went on to become a major star in film and television. The show also helped to pave the way for other teen-centered comedies that followed, such as Freaks and Geeks and Saved by the Bell. In conclusion, while the critical reception of the show may have been mixed, its nominations and awards, as well as its impact on the entertainment industry and the careers of those involved, speak to its enduring legacy and significance. Are you out of your, like, mind? In the making of the 1982 TV series, several interesting changes occurred. For instance, the original actor cast as Johnny Slash, John Femia, was replaced by Merritt Butrick after the showrunners were impressed by Butrick's audition. Femia was then recast as Marshall Blechman, who was initially written as a computer geek. However, when Femia performed several scenes, it became clear that the character wasn't working. In an attempt to avoid being fired, Femia decided to play to his strengths and suggested they make his character a class clown instead. The part was rewritten as a cute up who did impressions. Additionally, Amy Linker, who played Lauren Hutchinson, wore padding and fake braces during filming. The show also brought two of its actresses, Tracy Nelson and Claudette Wells, together. They met on set and became fast friends, remaining best friends to this day. Overall, the making of the TV series was filled with unexpected changes and the forming of lasting friendships. It's nobody's fault.
during the filming of the popular 80s TV series, Sarah Jessica Parker, who played the lead role, was known for her infectious laughter. Her giggles were so contagious that they often caused other cast members to break character during scenes. The show's creator, Ann Beats, was a former writer for Saturday Night Live. She brought her unique humor to the series, which helped it stand out from other teen comedies of the time. One episode featured a guest appearance by MTV VJ Martha Quinn. The young cast members were starstruck and nervous to meet her, but she put them at ease with her friendly and down-to-earth personality. The show tackled real-life issues that teenagers faced, such as peer pressure, body image, and relationships. The writers conducted research by talking to high school students and incorporating their experiences into the show. Despite its critical acclaim, the series only lasted one season due to low ratings. However, it has since gained a cult following and remains a beloved classic among fans of 80s television. The young cast members formed close bonds during filming and have remained friends to this day. They often reminisce about their time on the show and the lasting impact it had on their careers. In one memorable episode, the characters attended a school dance and performed a choreographed routine to the song Mickey by Tony Basile. The scene took hours to film due to the complex dance moves and the cast's lack of dance experience. Behind the scenes, the crew worked tirelessly to create the show's iconic 80s fashion. The wardrobe department spent hours sourcing clothing and accessories to capture the essence of the era. The show's theme song, performed by the waitresses, became a hit single and is still remembered fondly by fans today. The catchy tune perfectly captured the spirit of the show and its quirky characters. Despite its short run, the impact of the series can still be felt today. It paved the way for future teen comedies and helped launch the careers of several young actors. Oh, Mr. Murphy, we're all reasonable adults. We can discuss this. What? Behind the scenes of the show, the teenage cast of the TV series faced unfortunate circumstances, including drug abuse. The creator, Ann Beats, revealed that drug use was prevalent on set, stating that it was the norm. Another member of the band Devo, Gerald Casale, confirmed this, describing how the girls on set were out of control, engaging in drug use, and more. The series was ultimately canceled in 1983, and CBS intended to replace it with another teen comedy called The Best of Times. However, due to a lukewarm response, the network pulled the plug after just one episode. Ann Beats, the show's creator, drew inspiration from her own personal experiences, having previously worked as a writer for Saturday Night Live. The 1982 TV series, often referred to as Square Pegs, holds a significant place in film history. As one of the first shows to focus on the high school experience of teenage girls, it paved the way for future programming in this genre. The film broke new ground by addressing the struggles of adolescent girls with humor and authenticity, making it a trailblazer in its time. The show's impact on future filmmaking is evident in the many spin-offs and adaptations it inspired. From freaks and geeks to stranger things, the TV landscape is filled with shows that explore the lives of teenagers in relatable and engaging ways. The creators of these shows have undoubtedly been influenced by the groundbreaking work of Square Pegs. Moreover, the film's legacy can be seen in the careers of its talented cast members. Many went on to have successful careers in film and television, including Sarah Jessica Parker, who starred in the hit series Sex and the City, and Amy Linker, who appeared in numerous TV shows and movies. In addition, the show's catchy theme song, performed by punk rock band The Waitresses, became a cultural touchstone and remains popular to this day. The song's upbeat and irreverent tone perfectly captured the spirit of the show and helped to make it a hit with audiences. Overall, Square Pegs left an indelible mark on the world of television and film. Its groundbreaking approach to storytelling and its impact on future filmmaking have cemented its place in film history. You got a slash, you got a maid, that simple never show. Be dancing with them in little seconds. Dance? Yes. In the world of 1982 television, the series Square Pegs featured several interesting behind-the-scenes stories. For instance, Merritt R. Butrick, who played a significant role, had previously been told by the California Institute of the Arts faculty that he lacked the talent to continue his studies there. They even suggested that he look for another career path. However, the following year, he landed a part in Square Pegs, much to the surprise and chagrin of his former teachers, when he later appeared in Star Trek II. The Wrath of Khan, one of his teachers expressed happiness that Vutrik hadn't listened to them, 
and had believed in himself, ultimately proving them wrong. Moreover, during the filming of the episode, It's All How You See Things, actresses Amy Linker and Sarah Jessica Parker were actually fighting, just like their characters in the show. When Patty throws the lunch tray at Lauren, Linker was so enraged that she threw the milk at her co-star. This was not planned or directed, but the two actresses later made amends. Additionally, both Tracy Nelson and Claudette Wells had to wear wigs throughout the series. Nelson had a very short new wave haircut when she was cast, but the director of the pilot thought her short hair made her look like a boy, so she was fitted with a longer wig. When Wells was cast, she was told she needed to get braids and beads. She didn't know it was the show's responsibility to do this for her, so she drove up and down the streets of South Central looking for salons to do her hair. When she finally found one, it took nine hours to complete. After the pilot was filmed with her real hair, the producers of the show decided to get her a wig to keep her hair consistent. The two actresses bonded over their hair frustrations and became lifelong best friends. You can't even tell a joke. Look what I can offer her. She picked some guy with tools. <laughs> Did the show from 1982 leave a lasting impression on you? Square Pegs, a groundbreaking TV series, still resonates with many viewers today. If you're one of them, we'd love to hear your story. How did this classic series influence your perspective on cinema or impact your personal experiences? Share your memories with us and the community. Your insights could inspire others and enrich our discussions. Don't forget to engage with fellow cinema enthusiasts by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more explorations. Together, let's celebrate the magic of the film and its enduring legacy. We can't wait to see your comments. No, I'm not. And I know that there are others who feel the same way. Well, you have to try and understand him.